Good morning. Good morning. Today is a very exciting day, and yet as we reach within us and face realities, though the world is making progress in some areas, we are stepping back 50 to 60 years in other areas. I want to embrace all that my colleague has said this morning and then share with you some information from the Missouri side, from Kansas City, Missouri, of which we must have to accept, and I'm not proud to say, but is one of the two states in the United States that has not yet outlawed lynching. So please do understand that we live under a very racist regime, even though we have in place in America affirmative action laws, we claim that justice is blind, and yet we are right now practicing redlining economy. That's what I refer to it as, redlining economy. It goes far beyond redlining on insurance. It goes far beyond redlining on jobs. It goes far beyond redlining on income. We actually redline on land use and the ability to purchase. When I say that, what I want to say to you is that it is not by a cultural misnomer that, that black people and poor people are eligible to go and buy a Cadillac Escalade of which the payment range is higher than a low to moderate income house would be. Now they are eligible to buy the Escalade but are denied the opportunity of buying the house. Why? Where? Only in America. Why? Because land ownership is the strongest investment that ranges not just in America but across the world. And we are being denied of that, not by choice, not by intellect, but by redlining economy or redlining economic practices that are being spread across America. When we deal with Kansas City, Missouri, I'm proud to say that as I stand before you today, I represent one-thirteenth of a billion dollar budget. One-thirteenth of a billion dollar budget. I represent 25% of the Plans and Zoning Committee. I represent 25% of neighborhood, community, and economic development, and still yet, there is a problem. The problem is this. In so many ways, we have a problem communicating, though we all speak the same language, we have a problem communicating what fairness is. Now it's only in America that you can come from a foreign country, be given a job, be given tax uh, uh, benefits higher than mine. Even though my father lived here, my mother lived here, my grandparents died here, my father fought in the war here, my brother was drafted here, I was educated here, and I paid taxes. But only in America do you find that we have the, 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 the economic practices that put away unfairly and push aside the population of which it rests upon our backs. We find that in the greater Kansas City area, just recently, only a few months ago, we were again challenged by about the sixth or eighth um, election with on the ballot, light rail. A man by the name of Clay Chastain continued to put light rail on, on the ballot in Kansas City, Missouri. Now, it's been voted down several times, but it, had, it, it, it was voted down by very slim margins every time. So, so, as I was blessed to become a part of the city government system and now be a city council person, uh, the freshmen on the bench now have put into legislation there in Kansas City ordinances that are active that require you to live in the area if you're going to put anything on the ballot and require you to get a percentage from each district of the city before you can do so. Because our friend and our brother Clay Chastain no longer even lives in Kansas City, Missouri, but he came back to hold a campaign for light rail in Kansas City. Very strange to me, I've never understood the gentleman, but because I am a Christian, Reverend, I do love him. All right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> when we talk about the issue of light rail and public transportation, in the greater Kansas City area, it has been a fight for a number of years. The fight was, we must change the spines of the bus. Everybody was saying, 
you know, in, 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 in bureaucratic Kansas City, um, if I may use the term. And let me just share with you, I am just myself. I don't know if Randall knew what he was doing when he invited me. I could get him in a lot of trouble. But believe me, my flight leaves out at about 2.25, and I intend to be on it. <laughs> but the problem is, historically, in our city, um, all of our numbered streets run east and west, and our named streets run north and south. In the history of Kansas City, African Americans were not allowed to live south of 27th Street. All right? Now, the downtown area did not come beyond Truman Road, which is about 15th Street. All of the jobs, the industrial uh, community, and all of the jobs were located in the northern eastern part of the city. And fortunately, but mysteriously, all of the tr public transportation spines ran straight through the urban core. So poor people could ride the bus if they didn't afford a car and could get to the job that they had, if they had one, anyway. Well, the light rail idea was to take out a large percentage of buses, put in light rail, and, and for many years they said light rail will be less expensive. What they really meant was the poor people will have less transportation and the white collar um, 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 Rockhurst boys, that's one of our upper echelon private colleges, will be able to ride light rail rather than to drive their dad's Porsche to go to school. That's what they really meant. <laughs> they really meant that what we're going to do is approach upon the community that those high school jobs will be given to other people. You know, flipping burgers at McDonald's, of which, as, as, if you'll check, McDonald's, because of its success, McDonald's exists about every three miles in urban areas. Every three miles. That's why they sell more hamburgers than anybody. They have made themselves more accessible than anyone else in the market. You can walk to McDonald's, or you can ride the bus. But light rail was not going to stop by McDonald's. <laughs> they weren't going to put in stops for light rail at McDonald's. They weren't going to put in light rail stops. It would have been inconvenient to put light rail tracks alongside what we refer to as the Bruce R. Watkins Freeway and or it's better known or more nationally known as US 71. US 71, you can leave out of Kansas City, go all the way to Arkansas and never take a turn. Therefore, some of the highways that were placed in our city were placed there to divide and weaken demographically and culturally. All the Hispanics that moved into the greater Kansas City area moved there at one time because, because we had so much train import and export business going on that they could live by the tracks, they could come in illegally on the trains, and without a green card get jobs loading and unloading trains. Freight was a purpose or a means by which people could live. And so our MoDOT, the Missouri Department of Transportation, decided that's too much. We want to run Highway I-35 right through the Hispanic or Latino community, and we want to separate them because there's too much conjugating and getting together. If we don't separate them, they're going to be empowered in a minute. So they took money and time and built what we refer to as I-35, which is one of our larger and most dangerous highways in America. When they finished separating all of the people in an effort to de-emphasize the impoverished areas that were inflicted upon us, remember that Kansas City and the state of Missouri and St. Louis, if you will, which are our most eastern and western urban areas in the state of Missouri, were highly known for agriculture. Can you believe that? And unfortunately, but fortunately for me, for some weird reason, I grew up having a goal to have my own farm and to own a beef transport company. So there I was, a black city girl, went to a land grant institution, majored in agriculture because I learned that farming is better referred to in corporate America as agriculture. In doing so, I rode the bus. 
back and forth from school. No light rail would take me there. And then I enrolled and lived on campus where I could walk to and from the dormitory and the class. But then, because of affirmative action, I was employed by the Department of Agriculture, and therefore I had to travel anywhere from 50 to 180 miles per day to and from work to do inspections. And what did I meet? I met bureaucratic people who didn't understand that when the little black lady comes out, she's coming to inspect the land to find out what portion of crops have been left or lost so that we can, in fact, write your family a check so that they won't experience the impoverished conditions of others. I said all of that to say to you that in America, and only in America, do you find philosophical governance says that make plans that have nothing to do with preserving the quality of life of the people that live in any said area. We govern this country by dreams and philosophy and not by reality. That's just the truth. Unfortunately, but fortunately, I too am American. When we say I too am American, let us understand that in the Kansas City area, in the state of Missouri, and across this country, the cry for light rail leaves out simple economics. Simple economics means that mom, dad, and the kids make up the average family in, in most places. But we do find that in the African American population and are in impoverished conditions, that most of our homes are led by single parent women. Large growing statistic. Now let's figure out how this single parent, mom or dad, how the single parent with the average amount of three and a half children are able to get to work so that they can bring home the bacon, the Nike tennis shoes, and the jeans, and the sweatshirts, and the polos, and all of those designer clothes that we say children have to have so that their self-esteem will continue to grow. That one parent has to get to those jobs. You need more than one. Because in the average place, one job, one income in public transportation tracks is usually not enough to support the family. So therefore, that one parent, mom or dad, usually works one and a half job or two to support the family that has three and a half children on the average. Those three and a half children are now bused to school because in America, we have desegregation. But the truth of the matter is that all of these rules and regulations don't deal with preserving the quality of life. They deal with preserving political power and covering up the truth, only in America. The truth of the matter is that we have affected crime in a negative way because when we dealt with neighborhood schools, every child got equal education and the neighborhood was more stabilized because the Jones' children passed by Grandmother Smith's house the whole time they were growing up. Grandmother Smith knew those were the Jones' children and the Jones' parents were at work so Grandmother Smith could whoop their behind or discipline them while they were fighting on the way home from school, and the Joneses and the Smith children knew each other because they walked to school together, they were in class together, they walked back home together, and they played in the evening together, and they did their homework together, so neighborhoods were stabilized. The economics of the neighborhood were stabilized, and the crime rate was kept under control. How? Criminals, before the fail of this redlining economy, criminals had moral values. Can you believe that I'm saying that? <laughs> <laughs> criminals' moral values were, one, you do not steal or destroy your own neighborhood. That's the truth. Two, criminals, gangbangers, thieves and robbers did not let anybody else that carried those titles come into their neighborhood. Say amen, right? <laughs> you didn't do it. You, you didn't go and hit Miss Jones upside the head while she was on her way to the bus stop and take her purse because that was Bobby's mother.
and we have spent millions of dollars to bury our utility lines in certain areas, still working on it. And as I got here to Portland, Oregon, it's such a beautiful place. I was looking forward. I heard about all the vegetation and the flowers and everything. And while I was riding around yesterday, I said, oh, there's a mountain over there. <laughs> I was just peeping through the lines that were running and running. <laughs> Missouri, 
my, my colleague and mayor set a goal during her tenure on her watch that we would build 20,000 houses. In the third district of Kansas City, my average income is below $30,000. Are you with me? And guess what? The low to moderate income housing that they are building starts at $140,000. And I said, are you going to recruit people from Johnson County to live in these houses? It is urban sprawl in the worst form. In the northern, northern counties of Kansas City, Missouri, they're not building a new city. They're building another planet. The northern part of our city at one time had 45% of the land mass of Kansas City, which means that it was just not developed. In the past five years, we have built in excess, in excess of 15,000 single family homes over there. We have changed the density and changed the economic makeup of that part of the city so that large parts of the population over there live in houses that have six to eight bedrooms in them that sit on 300 square foot lots and that cost in excess of $1 million. That's sprawl. Because the Sprint executives that live over there, the lawyers and the doctors that live over there, because the economy is failing, are starting to make less money. How long do you think it will be that people will continue to afford? The world will no longer be separated racially, ethnically, or culturally. It is being separated economically. And I will tell you something. In America, the truth is in black and white, and the money is in green. And so we have to understand that in order to be fair in America and support a growing economy, you must learn to treat everybody the same. What does that mean? Everyone should be able to be employed. They should be able to be educated. They should be able to make livable wages. And they should be able to choose where they're going to live and how they're going to get to work because it is our duty to give them those opportunities. Those are opportunities. Light rail is an amenity. It's the cake and the ice cream. When you take buses off the line and give somebody cake and ice cream, why do you think diabetes and obesity is raging in America? You've taken the whole country off of basic needs and put them on extras and amenities. We can't live off of the extras. We have to live off foundation. Thank you, Reverend. I needed that. We have to live the fundamental thing that we have to have in America, in every city, is quality education, not inequitable education. Quality jobs with the opportunity of mobility. Don't you think we're in trouble when our economy is to the point that we can afford light rail, but we cannot afford indigent health care? Don't you think we're in trouble when we, we can afford light rail, but we cannot afford equitable education? Don't you think we're in trouble when we can afford to put in light rail, billions of dollars of lines for people to peek through so that they can enjoy the skyline of their city? I mean, hello. Hello. <laughs> when you look at your house now, everybody's house is pinstriped in certain cities. Yeah, that's Jody's home over there between the lines. <laughs> it's not read between the lines, it's, it's tour between the lines, look between the lines, but listen, read the fine print. The fine print is that we, if we dissolve our existing economy by putting in some amenities, the hungry people will never be fed, children cannot be educated if they're challenged with nutrition, and guess what? The poor and hard are the working poor, and the poor are becoming poorer, and the rich are becoming richer. Have you noticed that the largest growing stock in America is penitentiary stock? <laughs> penitentiary stock is growing because we are denying culturally and economically people to make livable wages. In our government, the first thing that I did, and I've only been in office for one year, they thought I was crazy and they thought I wouldn't pull it off. I said, I'm going to pull this off. The first thing that I did was go in and raise the pay rate 
of the city employees that were in the top tier, they have a 12 tier pay policy. Once you get to the top, you just stay there. No cost of living raise, you just stay, you're on the 12th tier. Good, you, and you haven't graduated yet? No, I'm staying in the 12th grade. I'm gonna stay in the 12th grade till I can afford to retire. Health costs going up, employment and income staying level. We created another step, put in equitable pay raises, and began to pay people at a rate that they could live. It has helped to stabilize more so our budget. Our budget, when I came in, was in a serious shortfall. Now the shortfall is still short, but getting better. You have to give people equitable income, great education, competitive growth, fair housing in every place, and density cannot become such a groundswell that you have to find your way through the projects to get to your house. And it all rests upon what we do with public transportation. Think about it. I hope and pray that you will understand that campaigning and endeavoring to do these things means that you have to get back to the basics. Knock on the door, educate the population, and share with the rich <coughs> entrepreneurs that if it doesn't do anything else, it's going to blow your bottom line away. Why? Because the people that are able to come in on entry-level positions are not the people that afford cars. They ride the bus to work. And if you force them <coughs> off of public transportation to get to your job, you're going to have to lose all of them, waste your training dollars, because you're going to have to hire new entry-level people. So it's going to hit the rich and the poor as well. I say that light rail is a donut, a cake, or a piece of ice cream when we're in the middle of trying to eat ham and greens. Let's get the ham, let's get the greens, and leave the ice cream for later. Thank you so very much.